Okay, today we are going to look at getting an NVMe drive installed in the Raspberry Pi 5. We have this hat adapter and we're going to take a look at it, getting it installed so that we can support this NVMe drive directly on here. It doesn't really quite work well with USB 3, which is an issue uh, whenever we do a speed test with the USB 3, the drive crashes and the OS crashes and you have to restart. If you plug it into a regular USB here, it works fine. So it's, I don't think it's an issue with the drive. I believe it's an issue with the speeds on USB 3, maybe power levels. I've tried some different settings, still can't get it to work. So we are going to use the NVMe hat. So let's unplug this and we will get this installed. This is the unit that we have. Pretty basic and it comes with some ribbon cable and mounting hardware. So let's take the top off of our Raspberry Pi. Uh, we'll have to remove the fan. I don't know if we'll be able to remount it underneath. We'll have to see when we get there. So I think just to keep most of this together, I'm just going to move these screws around so that they're kind of upside down in here. And we can just slide the top off. Take out our fan cable. I'm guessing that goes just like that. So maybe we could possibly use these holes here to mount the fan underneath. Looks like there'll be space for the fan, so let's try that out. Because if we can keep the fan there, it'll help keep the Raspberry Pi cool as well as the NVMe drive, which would be a bonus. We just have to see if these little screws will fit in these holes here. Okay, so it looks like we're not really gonna get a good fit for the fan unless we just use one screw. And if we put that screw tight, it should be okay. But we'll also have to make sure that the clearance on the Pi side will also be okay. So let's just see. Just, just clears. I don't know if you'll be able to see that here. So right here, it is maybe one and a half millimeters clearance. So that's great. So we'll flip this around so that the wires are at the back, the other side, and we can tighten this down. And that fan will be fine, just sucking air through the holes and cooling our Raspberry Pi and the NVMe drive as well. Okay, that fan isn't, it's on there pretty tight, it's not gonna go anywhere. Maybe if we use a small zip tie or something, we can get another one in on the corner. But for now, this will work great. Let's see if this case is compatible. We might only have three mounting spaces for the standoffs because the acrylic plastic inside blocks at least one hole here. So you can see the shine on this acrylic plastic is blocking this hole, but this one is free, this one is free, and I believe this one is free as well, which is fine. So we'll have to attach these. I believe these attach with these black screws. They just screw in underneath and tighten down. So we'll need to take the pie out of this case. So this one needs to go in. A better grip on them. Okay, so we got three standoffs. Now we got them tightened up. 
So now we have to attach a ribbon cable here through this hole and I believe into this connection spot here. We'll just confirm in the instructions. So it looks like the ribbon cable goes through that portion out the bottom through the hole and then into the connector there. So this is being oriented this way. So ribbon cable is coming through here and into this ribbon cable slot there. So let's get that installed. You know, it might be easier actually. What we'll do is we'll install the cable onto the Pi first because the case is in the way. So this might be easier to do this way. We'll use our screwdriver. Actually, one of these bolts will work fine. Put that cable in there and then just depress the sides there, lock it in place. Okay, that ribbon's nice and tight in there. Now we can install it here. This will be much easier, I think, to get it through this hole and then depressed onto the pin. So this connector is going to install on the first six pins here. Okay, we can see right there that it's picking up those first six pins. So we'll just get this ribbon connector through the hole. We'll line up our first set of six pins and we'll press it down. And we have wires for our fan here. Oh, we can't forget to connect our fan back. So let's do that while we're here. Easy enough. Ribbon cable through the hole. Line up those six. And then kind of just press down. Okay. So let's connect this ribbon here. We're just going to give it a little bit of a flex here and let it spring into the position. So when we flatten it out a little bit, it should put itself in there. There's a little slight lip on the blue piece of tape that you can use to kind of uh, push it in there and then close it up. So we're all connected. Our six pins are connected here. Ten. 10 pin, yeah, so it's a, a 10 pin. So the next thing we need to do is, so we need to enable the external header. So we need to edit the boot slash config file by adding these parameters. So I'm not sure if you can see that, so there we go. We have Raspberry Pi installed on here. We're gonna boot to this over the USB, modify the OS and modify the EEPROM on the Raspberry Pi. So We'll just plug this in and we'll get this booted up. So the fan's spinning, which is a good sign, means it works. Okay, so we need to go to boot and we need to edit the config.txt file. Okay, so it says it's moved to boot firmware config.txt. So let's go to there, boot firmware config.txt. So let's see if what we want is in here. Here we go. This is one of them. Data param PCIe X1 Gen 3. Perfect. The other one we want is the same thing. Paste. So the first one's enabling the PCIe 1 by slot and it's certified for Gen 2 speeds, which is going to be 5, 5 gigs a second. The second line we can add gen equals three here, and that's gonna force gen three, which will give us 10 gigs a second. Hopefully this will be stable, it should be. So we'll save this, move it over there. So we'll go home, desktop, save it as config.txt. Close that. So we need to go through here. Change to root, and then we can do it through here. So CD boot firmware. And then we're gonna move the config file to config.original. Check what the permissions are. So it's a root root. So then we'll move our file that's at our desktop. And we're gonna move it to here. Didn't let us do the permissions. So 
we have our config file here. It has the same permissions. And if we take a look at, our entries are still there at the bottom. Perfect. So now actually while we're in here, we can run the command so that it updates the, the EEPROM so that we can boot from here. So sudo rpi eprom, oops, that's dash eprom config, and we'll do that dash edit. So we need to add the lines here. And then boot order, we need to change this. Instead of 4.6, we need it to be 4.1.6. Then we'll save. And then we'll exit. We can see that it's writing the EEPROM. Update successful, perfect. Now we will shut down and we will boot our Raspberry Pi. We'll take out the NVMe out of the SSD enclosure and we'll attach it to the, the NVMe hat and power it on and see if we can get this to boot. First try. Let's try it out. Okay, so here we are, we're shut down. Let's unplug this. Let's unplug this. We're gonna open this guy up. We'll slide this guy right into here. And we should probably put a couple screws in here. So let's do that right now. So that this hat isn't moving around. Okay, so we've got three screws on here. It's pretty sturdy. We should be able to power this on now. We've done the configuration. We've set it up. We've changed the EEPROM. Let's power it on and see if it works. So you'll see I have no SD card in there. The only thing that's plugged in is going to be power, HDMI, and the NVMe. So anything comes up, we should be booting from it. We got a red light. We have power. And let's see what comes up on the screen, if anything. We got some blinking light here, and it is booting. That's pretty sweet. Okay, so it booted up. Let's connect to it. Okay, it's got some updates. Let's, let's install the updates, make sure it can do something. And we have some blinking light. I don't know if you can see that. We'll download and install these updates, and then we will run the disk speed test that we did with the other devices. So the other devices are, we have this SD card, which is one of the fastest SD cards for the Raspberry Pi. This one scores, I believe it was 3255. I'll have to double check, but around there. Over 3,000 on the speed test. A very good SD card, uh, really fast. The other that we used was this SanDisk USB 3. It didn't score that great. I think it got about uh, 1,200 or 1,100 or so. I did the testing for these yesterday so that we can do this today after we installed this. So we will compare these speeds. I wasn't able to get a speed out of this on USB 3. I'm not sure why. Uh, it might have to do with just the driver on this and the USB-C to USB-A port doesn't communicate well, I'm not sure. I was able to get USB 2 speed, so on the black ports here, it worked perfectly fine. It didn't test very high though, it only got a score of 3750 or so. So I would expect that into the USB three blue ports here, it would get much faster, but it just kept crashing. So I wasn't able to test that. I don't didn't want to spend much more time trying to get speeds out of it. I spent a few hours on it and all I could do was get it to crash. But this worked perfectly fine multiple times out of the USB two slots. So I'm um, not sure what the deal with that is. It might be a kernel issue. I read online that there were some kernel issues with USB three on the Raspberry 5. I'm not 100% sure what the deal is though. So maybe in the future, 
if I get another enclosure, maybe with a different um, board in it. This is a re this is a real tech board inside of this one. So so those are what we're testing, and then we'll test the speeds on this one. Okay, so now that this is up and running, let's see if we can run our disk test without crashing this time like it does when we're connected to USB 3. And let's see what happens. The light is blinking away on the NVMe hat, so we'll leave it for a minute and see what happens. Oh, there we go. Just took an extra second to start, that's all. Wow, that's really, really excellent score. 51,247. So if we go over to pibenchmarks.com, we can see how that score lands. So it does look like there are better scores here, also worse ones. Um, looks like there are some other NVMe drives in the 3000s, 4000s, 7000s. And we are up in the 51,000s. So it looks like Pi Benchmarks hasn't been updated for a few days, so I'm not able to get the screenshot of the NVMe drive from the website. But we can see in the command line here the test we did result with over 51,000 points, which puts us currently at 13th place on the Pi benchmarks for the fastest SSDs. The Intel SSD isn't the fastest SSD, so that's probably why we're not getting any faster. But if we put something in there like a 990 Pro or something like that from Samsung, we would probably score higher. So here's a screenshot of the current standing for the fastest SSDs. And we'll put a screenshot of the benchmarks that I did with the other storage devices, the SD card and the USB 3. And here's that. So this should work pretty good for all the things that you'd want to do. I haven't come up with a big project for the Raspberry Pi yet, but in the near future, if you have any suggestions on anything you want to see, maybe a retro gaming or something like that, we can get that worked out. So that's how we get an NVMe drive installed directly to a Raspberry Pi 5. I hope this video helped you out. I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.